Inline classes in Kotlin are all about bringing value semantics to the language. So to introduce objects where only their actual values count and not their identity. Now, inline classes are quite the long journey for the Kotlin language and the team has a lot of plans for them as well. But in Kotlin 1720, uh, they're getting one important step better because under a new experimental flag, you can now make inline classes generic for the first time. Now, this is something really sweet. So I thought, why don't we just sit down with some code snippets and discuss what it means, and most importantly, figure out how it improves your life as a developer. Let's get into it. So generic inline classes are a really cool step forward for one big reason. They allow you to add extra type safety whenever you're working with class hierarchies that are wrapped with inline classes. Tell you what, let me whip up an example that's gonna make things a little bit easier to explain. So right here, uh, I have a sealed class hierarchy of vehicles. Nothing fancy, just a car that has a number of wheels and a boat that maybe has a sail. And I also have my kebab class, which stores the most important value, which is the number of onions. Sorry, can you tell I haven't had lunch yet? Anyway, this one clearly isn't a vehicle. So what I would like to do now is to write a function that can work on particularly high quality vehicles. So the way that I would want to model this is to have an inline class, HQ, that wraps my vehicle objects. You know, so that I don't accidentally pass a low quality vehicle to my function. But as anyone who has ever had a really good kebab can tell you, vehicles aren't the only thing that can be of really high quality. You might also want to wrap your kebab in this HQ wrapper. But without generics, you would now have to give up precious type safety because you'd have to make the thing that HQ wraps a common type. And in this case, that would be any. And the problem with that is that this makes it really tough to write functions that only work with a specific subtype. Like this function that's supposed to inspect high quality vehicles, but obviously not kebabs. So what we have to do is check the type of the thing parameter at runtime, which means things might explode when we've already shipped our code. And likewise, because we don't have any real type safety, Nothing stops us or our fellow developers from stuffing a kebab into this function, which will promptly blow up in our face. All we can really do here is beg using the documentation or by naming the parameter something crazy like please only pass vehicles. So in this case, inline classes didn't really help us. So yeah, we managed to constrain the inspect HQ vehicles functions to only accept high quality objects, but we lost the ability to enforce the actual type that the high quality wrapper contains. And even though this wonderful kebab does have enough onions on it for my taste, it blows up our code and we generally don't want that. So very clearly, there is room for improvement here. And that improvement is generic inline classes. Since that's an experimental feature, it'll require us to opt in. All I have to do here is to set the Kotlin options language version to 1.8. Make sure you don't confuse it with the JVM target. Again, that's a different thing. And after a quick Gradle import, we are already ready to get going again. But it is also worth remembering that for now, this feature is JVM only, but that's just because it's fresh out of the oven. So let's take a look. To avoid name clashes, I'll name this new inline class high quality instead of HQ. And then we'll make use of the new generics. And I'll say that this thing that it wraps is of type T. So some type that is specified when we use this inline class. And with this, we already have the mechanics to write code that can actually prevent mistakes like the one that we just discussed. So we can now write a function that actually accepts only high quality vehicles as its parameter. So because this function parameter is already constrained to be a high quality vehicle and not just a high quality anything, we don't need to do the runtime checks as we did before. And likewise, somebody using our new function will get an appropriate error message that this function does indeed only work with vehicles and not with what is hopefully my lunch. So from a usage side, that's pretty much all there is to these new generic inline classes. 
However, I think inline classes is one of those topics where I'm always itching to look at what's happening under the surface, under the hood, because after all, inline classes are one of those topics where the nitty gritty details like boxing start to usually be discussed at length. So let's investigate one more question. What does this compile to? The answer to that, as to hopefully most things in life, is found in the bytecode. Let me pop open the bytecode viewer. Uh, admittedly, this isn't very nice to read, so let's decompile the code and let's look at what the Java sources would look like that are equivalent to this. The most interesting part about all of this code is the signature of the inspect high quality vehicle method. Now, in the Kotlin code, we get the extra type safety of only accepting objects of type vehicle wrapped in a high quality inline class. Now you can see that here, this isn't present anymore. It's almost like the high quality wrapper has been inlined. So it doesn't introduce any extra overhead over just passing a vehicle object directly. It's just syntactic sugar at this point. But the thing that might stand out to you here is that this method accepts an object. So the equivalent of any and not just straight up a vehicle. So what's up with that? The answer for this has to do with the way that we've defined our high quality inline class. If we look at the type parameter that we've given it, T, we can see that there are no bounds to this type. We could create a high quality vehicle, kebab, integer, daytime object, or anything else we could dream of. The common superclass for all of those is any, which ends up as the object we see in this definition. Now, if all of our objects were part of a common hierarchy, for example, by having all of these objects implement the real life object interface, then things would look a little bit different. Because now we could go ahead and constrain our inline function to only accept types that implement real life object. And now after having added such a bound, we can go back into the bytecode and back into the decompiled code to see that the function now takes a real life object as a parameter instead of just the plain object we had a minute ago. Or in short, the compiled function always gets the upper bound of the provided generic as its value parameter. That's just something to keep in mind. In turn, this also means that using a primitive type as a generic parameter currently won't prevent boxing of that type. So if you have an int that you've wrapped as high quality, that number is still going to be an object and not a primitive value. To make this code work, I also have to get rid of my bound again. But now if we look at the compiled code once more, we can see that it is indeed an object. Now this of course is a little bit of overhead and getting rid of that requires Kotlin's inline classes not only to provide generics, but reified generics. Now those aren't available yet, but they're already written in the stars and they're bound to arrive in Kotlin eventually as well. But we'll need a little bit of patience on that front. All right, let's recap. Generic inline classes allow us to get additional type safety when we're using inline classes together with class hierarchies. And they do that by allowing us to constrain the types uh, that are passed around at compile time rather than work around any limitations with icky runtime checks. To use the feature, you currently opt in by setting the language level to 1.8 and then you just write your code. All right. All this talking about high quality kebab has made me really hungry. So I'm gonna go grab myself a dinner. I'm thinking I'm gonna get some extra onions on that as well. Take care.